1st of November 2018. Today we will be doing a case study why a Shih Tzu is having difficulty urinating again one year after doing a bladder stone removal surgery. Okay. Now this Shih Tzu is a male neutered Shih Tzu, 11 years old. Now the owner had uh, seen that this Shih Tzu had difficulty in passing urine or passing blood in the urine for two months, right? And, and she uh, didn't, didn't uh, go to the bed to seek a uh, veterinary diagnosis. But uh, after two months, the Shih Tzu started to stop passing urine. And that is, that is a very painful process for the Shih Tzu because he he, he is very he is very painful, the very full bladder, and he cannot pass water. So I think the Shih Tzu will cry, and uh, so the owner had no choice but to bring the Shih Tzu to the vet. Now, in this case, on what day was it? October 26. 26th, the owner brought the Shih Tzu to us at Topayo Vets, and it was treated by Dr. Daniel. Now, now the, due to the cost constraint, so there was no x-ray done, but uh, Dr. Daniel would have to sedate and exercise the dog, and uh, he passes the catheter through, this is the catheter, into the bladder, okay, in the bladder, and you can see in this diagram, this is a very good diagram actually, so the catheter goes in through the penis and in the urethra. Now he discovered that the block, there's a thumb stone blocking here, so that's why the catheter, the catheter cannot go further in, the catheter cannot go further up. This catheter cannot go further up into the bladder. So, so what he did was, he has to flush saline to push back the stones into the bladder, and uh, as you can see. There are many small stones, less than uh, 3mm, and they are all stuck inside the... This is the catheter, but it, it was stuck inside the urethra, okay? So these are the stones, they are not big stones, they can still be passed out. But uh, because when they are all accumulated together, then they become a big problem for the dog. And as you can see here in the drawing, the, the dog cannot pee because the urine cannot go through because even though they are small stones there are so many of them and uh, and so so the, the urine from here this is a bladder cannot uh, cannot flow out you see so so this one requires emergency treatment otherwise this bladder will become very big and rupture and then the dog will die, you see, because the urine keeps on forming, but it can't flow out. So this is why the owner brought it here. Now, uh, this is not the first time, this is the second time actually, the owner brought it to the vet for, for the same problem, the dog cannot pee. That means the bladder is obstructed, here they call it the, the bladder is blocked a block bladder and uh, this way the dog cannot pee. Okay, so let's talk about the surgery done. The catheter was passed into it and uh, Dr. Daniel will use a syringe to suck out suck out the stones because once these, these stones are inside the bladder, they can suck out individually and uh, I'm surprised that uh, there are not many actually, but maybe most of them are actually lost. Most of them are lost in the urine. Now let's see the, some pictures of the small stones in the urine. Then you can see, you can see that uh, this is the urine. You can see these are the stones. They are not very big. They are about 3 mm or, or so. But some more, any more pictures of it? You see there? So you suck it out. Or it can flow out actually. Uh, and so these are the stones which I think he, he managed to collect some. Huh? He can collect some and they are here. So we were sent to the lab in the US for, for analysis. 
Normally it is in the University of Minnesota. They, they are the specialists in, in uh, urinary analysis. Okay, take the So, what we do, or what most vets in Singapore do, they send it there to the Minnesota Eurolift Center and uh, fill up a form. Normally, nowadays, it's computerized. So, you fill up a form and uh, it'll be sent by, by post to, to the University of Minnesota in the USA. Okay, so this is the method of uh, confirming that the stone is uh, what type of stone it is. Now we did take a urine, urine sample. As you can see, normally we collect urine from kidneys. We collect urine and uh, there's blood inside. So there's blood, the red blood there. And the pH is 7, huh? pH 7. These are the two important things. Of course, Ag is important as well. Huh? 1.033 which is uh, quite thick the urine is quite turbid now the important thing is this actually even if you don't send the stones for analysis you can see the crystals huh? triple phosphate amorphous phosphate 3 plus that's a lot okay this shows that um, these are strobite stones more or less we know that they are strobite stones and not calcium oxalate or other types of stones. So from this urine test, roughly we know, but it's best to send the, the stone for analysis. After all, that is that is the best huh? if you have the facility, send it for analysis. And uh, so this is what we are going to do. Now I'm going back to last year because you are saying why why the why the dog is having having uh, leather stones again, you know, urin urinary stones. So I will go back to the history of last year, the flashback, huh? one year ago. So the dog had great difficulty peeing and was dribbling urine all over the apartment. So so the owner went to vet one, whose x-ray, uh, this vet, vet one x-ray, did not show any any stones clearly. I will, I, will, I, will, I will show you, I will uh, click on to, to show the larger x-ray. So the, so vet one advised the, the owner to go to vet two uh, for, for ultrasound. Now, in that retrospect, that means we, we look at it again. Uh. Now vet, vet one is very good because she used a catheter to pump air, see that pump air inside uh, the bladder. And because you see that the dog also has a lot of fecal pellets, huh? so this one could be a could be the stone. Although it, it might not be because you can see there are other similar lumps in the intestines. Huh? So bad, the bad one diagnosed that there was no stones. Huh? This is bad one second X-ray. She took a, a second X-ray, huh? and this X-ray also shows that uh, she pumped air in again, huh? but. This is a very good x-ray, you see the outline of the bladder. Then here is the here is the urethra, the band of urethra, and comes down, the os penis. Now, now there is no stone at all. So that one suck up all the urine and advise the owner to go to vet 2 for x-ray. So this is the timeline, September 23. 2017, which is about a year or more ago. So the x-ray shows no strobite stone. So it refer to VET2 for ultrasound. Now, the owner did not really go there because she thought maybe no need. And also because of financial reasons, if there's not necessary to, to spend money, then there's no point spending money for ultrasound. So the dog's Three days later, it became very uh, painful because the bladder was so swollen and the dog was crying. So the owner brought brought the, the dog to VET2 for ultrasound as advised by VET1. Now VET2 did an x-ray and uh, it shows a big stone but quarter $4,000 for the surgery. So, so the next day, 
the owner went to vet one, vet one to get the stone removed. Now this is the X-ray of vet two. Uh. Now you can see the vet two's X-ray. The the bladder was already very full. There you see, very full, but not really as full as to show a rotor abdomen. It's, it's still full now. You notice that there is a small stone resting here on the bladder I mean inside the bladder but of course it could be mistaken for another of those lumps you can see that this will be the foot lumps huh? the, the foot or the there are also a lot of lumps here but that to diagnose a stone a stroke stone in the bladder and I agree with him because you can see quite clearly that this is a stone inside the bladder of course there was no uh, air contrast because the bladder was full now the owner did not want any any uh, hospitalization or surgery just wanted that one to release the blockage and let the dog go home now that one used ultrasound guided cystocentesis that means putting a needle in, using ultrasound to guide and suck out the urine uh, suck out the urine so that uh, the dog is not having painful uh, enlarged bladder so the next day the next day the owner on September 27, that's 2017 uh, said when the vet one, because vet one charges a cheaper rate uh, almost less than half compared to 4,000 from that too. So the big stone was removed, sent to the University of Minnesota, USA, and the result was uh, strobite stone. So that one did advise the owner to feed an acidifying therapeutic, therapeutic diet. Now this is the acidifying then here, therapeutic diet where, where, where the dog will it, this, these are the two brands. Now, the, the vet one did recommend the owner to do this, uh, to fit this diet, CD or this one, urinary SO. And this diet will acidify the urine. So if the urine is acidified, that means it should be less than seven. It's less than seven. Then uh, these stones will not form, or this amorphous phosphate, strobite stone will not form and there will be no bacteria formation but the owner just continued feeding the commercial diet so uh, that was about one year ago so today, uh, today is October so one year later the, the, the dog forms develops again the small stones as you can see early on this is October 2018 eh? And I would suspect these are strobite stones as well. So actually the owner could have saved a lot of money and worries by just feeding the, the therapeutic diet, they call it a therapeutic diet for strobite stone prevention. Now, even though you feed this, you still have to do a urine test every, let's say, three to six months and uh, x-ray of the bladder and the kidneys and ureters every, they say every year but uh, most owners won't do it so many owners find that they fit this diet the, the problem is uh, prevented the problem of recurrence so in conclusion the cheapest way to prevent recurrence uh, that means coming back again for bladder blockage is to fit uh, they call it a prescription diet or therapeutic diet which make the urine very acidic acidic and then uh, the stones won't, won't, uh, won't form inside the strobite stones I'm talking about the other stones they, they, they cannot be prevented some, some of them cannot either they'll change the home cooked food home cooked food normally is uh, not so uh, easy to get stones but it all depends on the dog some breeds as nauseous they are prone to stone for, uh, development so so the, this explains why the case study shows that uh, this owner really spent a lot of money in the sense that operation uh, 
the second one, the recent one, there was no operation, just go in to flush the, the bladder and suck out the small stones. But uh, the other one last year, she spent maybe nearly 2,000 plus to, to seek treatment. Uh, all this could have been uh, prevented if the owner has uh, adopted advice to feed therapeutic diet or do a uh, yearly urine checkup, urine test uh, with the vet, the annual checkup. But uh, for various reasons, many Singapore owners don't do it. So, so uh, they don't even send a dog for annual checkup. So many dogs have rotten teeth, smelly gums, got bad breath, and uh, uh, urinary infections. But uh, so the best is for many owners just send a dog for uh, annual checkup and get a blood test done, urine test done, especially your old dogs, those over five years old. And this will ensure that your dog probably will live a longer life, disease-free. Okay, thanks. Thank you.